Yo, you yeah, listen. Burgess and Sabo just going at it. I mean, this surprised the living hell out of me because I was like, wait, hold on. Burgess is disgusting. For, let, let, let's get out of the way. He is disgusting. Okay? His search elbow is. I'm gonna probably say, honestly. Eliza Ballo punch level. Like, 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 I'm not even joking. This dude. Surge. And that was it. That, that's all he did. And the shockwave penetrated most of the. Well, no. Okay, fine. Maybe not Eliza Ballo punch level because Eliza Ballo did blow a hole through a fortress. But then again, it takes like an hour to warm up. And then Burgess just moves his elbows, and he's creating shock waves that almost penetrate the entire uh, Coliseum. And it was and he didn't even use hockey. We see him use the hockey to enhance the actual attack, but he's getting countered by Sabo. Sabo, that was some impressive shit. I mean, all he did was he pulled a Vulcan. He dragon talons, and he just thrust, and this was nasty, bro. Yo, I want. Ah! This was hot because it was like you see the cross counter, and all of a sudden there's like a slit that like it seems to like cut the actual like space itself, and then the armor on Burgess's um, yeah. On his right elbow, just shatters. Now, I have a speculation that the armor isn't actually an armor. It's more of a, like it's more of an it's more of a restraint, where in which it allows him to actually produce the shockwave, but in a more precise manner. Because Burgess has always been known for his strength, but the thing here is that with the armor allows him to like coordinate all the force into a shockwave but it also holds back his muscle that's what i'm assuming that's my take i mean that's what my that's my speculation now i could be dead wrong it could be an actual like protective gear again i don't know but at this point in time that's what i'm going to speculate and can he do it i have no idea because the thing on his elbow is still there but the arm piece behind it that's gone because Sabo's Dragon Talon had enough force to counter. That's insane. Dude, I'm like, yeah. And then Sabo, yeah. Yo, Sabo. I'm not going to say he's Admiral level based on one attack. There's, there's no way in hell. But it was still, like, really impressive. That's undeniable. It's undeniable. So, like, he has, like, like, like what is that in, 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 in uh, punching power? Like, that's, in, like, oh, that's an impressive shit. All right, let's move on. The thing here is that, according to what the announcer said, of course, Blackbeard's like well, he's he's like the rising star in the new world, and apparently there are ten captains underneath him, and one of them, of course, being Jesus Burgess. So the thing here is that if you take a look at, at the actual number of people in his crew, so we have the one guy, I've got his name, Pazzo, something like that. Then there's the largest battleship, San Juan Ruiz. Then there's Kathleen Donovan. Then there's Basco Short. There is Laffy. There's Doc Q. Oh, crap. There's two more. There's Burgess. And finally, there is CD. So those nine cats are the captains. So he, may, he, he must have gotten one more person to join him on his escapade. On, on his, you know journey to or his rise I should say yeah that's what that's what appropriate his rise in the new world he must have taken someone else in and it's really cool because it's like yeah like Blackbeard has made a lot of progress in these past two years that's for damn sure he has captains he has because so he so he himself is the Yonko he is the Emperor then he has captains 10 I think that's the same number that no 
Whitebeard had more guys. He had more commanders, right? He had Marco. I think he had... When it came to Whitebeard, I think he had 15 division commanders or 13. I forgot the exact number. But I think like one of, one of like the lower dudes was like this dude who was being controlled by Flamingo during the Whitebeard War. Like some like some big like ox dude. And like there was some guy with like a spear who was like pretty fast. But they were like whatever. Like they were like low ranking when it came to like the division commanders. So I forget how many Whitebeard had. But Merge, but Blackbeard is clearly, clearly getting up there. And he's first. Yeah, Verge is first. Which means that he's probably like the first mate of the Blackbeard Pirates. And that's pretty obvious to me. It's just that they didn't say that he was the first mate. They just said that he's the first division commander. Or the, like the first commander. Or the first captain. Whatever. Verge. Now, the thing here. And if I'm wrong, correct me in the comment section below. Because I tend to forget when it comes to you know like this kind of stuff in One Piece. I just happen to remember the names because, like, these guys were crazy cats. They, they were crazy. Like, they're all crazy. Well, except for that one guy, Pazzo or P whatever his name is. The thing here is this, though. I do like the fact that Sabo is very strong. All right? That's clearly obvious. Right? That's very obvious. He ain't no witch. And the fact that Rebecca came in there and she didn't really do anything. She couldn't cut the chain. She couldn't cut the horn. She couldn't do anything. I think there's a sign, I think there's a good sign to me, that because she doesn't have the power to attain the devil fruit by regular means, then Sabo will, will, will probably get it. And I think he deserves it, I really do. But again, that's just my assumption, that's what I see. It could also wind up being that they unlock the chest, the devil fruit falls out, and the one that actually catches it winds up being Rebecca. Which I would despise. Which I would detest with all of my heart and soul. No. 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 So, let's move on. The next bit. It's actually very simple after that. I mean, we have the Dwarf Army and they're going to where Sugar is. And basically, they have this plan, right? Apparently, most of the toy soldiers, actually, or most of the toys working in the factory area right now were actually the people who were taken from the, Cord from, from the Cordia Coliseum. And we actually see how it works, where the tubes, the main tube in the middle goes to the palace. But the other tubes are like locations throughout Dressrosa where, 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 where people can put scrap toys in. And all the tubes wind up leading back into like the scrapyard area. The scrapyard area is underneath the executive headquarter, the executive, the executive tower. And then once people are selected, they get sent up to the uh, up to the executive tower, so that that's how the system works, which I find very fascinating. I really do. It's actually not a bad system whatsoever. Um, it, it's actually very efficient because that means that anyone in the island can actually just put their can put the you know toys and the scrap in the area, and then they get sent funnel right 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 down to the scrap area, and then if they are in fact quote unquote uh, sick or if they don't function properly, then they can be fixed by sugar and uh, treble. But we find out that we find out two new things. A, Pika, he is uh, rocking the stone stone fruit, which is unfortunate. I thought it was so. Uh, you know, Pika P over here. This guy, he is an emerge dude, and I thought he's an emerge guy because that makes more sense to me because he's special ops. But then again. He's kind of a merge guy, only when it comes to rock and stone. So it's not steel, it's not any other material, it's not trees, it's just rock and stone. That's it, those two. And he can merge and assimilate and control, and control rock and stone. So that to, it, it's, it's actually a pretty good power when you think about it from the long run. And we see him actually take like, take like the castle walls and he's bringing them in. So he, so he can crush Zoro, Luffy, and Viola, which of course we know Luffy it ain't happening, Zoro it ain't happening, so obviously they're okay. And we find out that Treble, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed with Treble, I, I really am. The sticky, sticky fruit. I mean, yeah, special powers, yeah, okay, that, that's very obvious, but... <sighs> I don't know, man. I was hoping for something a lot more extravagant. 
like the uh, slug. Even slug would have been more extravagant than, than sticky sticky. Sticky sticky, I think, is just nah, nah, nah. Uh, I don't like it. I just don't. But at the same time, we do get to see Sugar and how her powers work, and it is in fact that it is what it is. She touches you, you get turned into a toy on the spot. She's hacked. Oh, she's mega hacked. Now, if she was more combat versed, she'd be devastated. Oh, yeah, she would. But no, she touches you, and you you turn into a toy. She says the command. And you will be the command. That's it. That's what it is. And Cavendish is now turned to a toy. We see Elizabeth Paolo, We see Sai. So, again, most of the ones who are in the Coliseum area, they're working right now in the factory area. And somehow, Usa, well, Usa and the others, they snuck by because, you know, they were in their costumes. And Robin's right there. And the, the, the plan at this point in time is to put this, like, Tabasco thingy in the bowl where sugar is eating the grapes from. So she'll mistaken it for a grape and then she'll bite into it and then she will pass out faint. Cause it's like the spiciest spice on the planet, according to the dwarf. So, I mean, cause they don't wanna hurt her cause she's a, cause she's a young girl. E even though her she stopped aging and so technically she's much older. The thing is that they don't wanna hurt her, they don't wanna hurt her cause she is, or they don't wanna physically hurt her. Because, hmm, let me change that. They don't want to physically directly hurt her because she has the body of a child. So no punches, no kicks, no explosions, no. They're going to try and feed her this Tabasco thingy and then she'll pass out and she'll faint. And then everything will be a-okay. People will return back into their forms, their regular human forms, which would actually save the toy soldier because he's fighting against Lao G and Lao G right now, he's punking. Oh, he's straight punking. And of course, that means that the people in the Coliseum will start to revolt, which means which means that the whole tournament is screwed. And oh, probably, I mean, it depends because Burgess he ain't gonna stop till he gets the mirror by no meat. And the same thing goes for Saba. And so if 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 Rebecca does get the mirror no meat, it's because of that. It's because the people turn to toys. I mean, who who were once turned into toys, they turn back into humans, and then chaos assumes, and then in the middle of Burgess's and Sabo scuffle, they're fighting. She comes in there, she grabs it, she eats it. So she gets it in a roundabout method. Which would really suck, once again. Because I'm not a fan. Her getting the fruit? I'm, I'm no. It's no. I don't like it at all. And finally, when it comes to the people in the factory area. Because I don't know where Chin Zhao is. He may be in the scrap, and apparently the uh, fish. He's also the fisherman guy. He's also uh, a revolutionary, and I call that. I call that. He was talking to Koala, and he was turned to a toy. But still, regardless, the thing here is that he's going to be able to come and you know contact Koala and the revolutionaries because people are saying how somehow Monkey D Dragon is going to just hop in there like yeah, he's going to come like that man and like the middle of the night and shit, like, and, and he's just going to come out of nowhere. And people want to see him fight against Fujitora. I'm like, bro. Fujitora? Like, That's like a final arc battle right there. Like, we're we going to hop in this shit? So, like, I, I'm just saying, you know, like, it, it, it's it's out there. But then again, it's Ichiro Oda. And Ichiro Oda has always been out there. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm done. King of Lightning. The chaptering overall. I thought it was a very good chapter, good plus. And I will see you guys later. Be sure, of course. No, it, it was a great chapter. Because honestly, yeah, I'm, am I biased? Yeah, because I, I saw about what he did to me was just awesome. I looked at that panel. I stared at it for hours. Well, no. Obviously, exaggeration. For like 30 minutes. I'm not joking. Because it was just that good. It was like, yo. And then, and then, and it's like, Burgess, yo, you know. Question. Surge elbow equals Elizabeth Battle punch. Yes or no? I don't know. Did it punch a hole through the Coliseum? I don't think so. But it was casual. No hour prep. And the Coliseum may have been made of a material stronger than the fortress that Elizabeth blew his punch through. 
That's an assumption we don't know. And also, he didn't use hockey. When we see him use, because we see the actual black armor, well, we see the armor around the elbow. It was once, you know, on an actual steel or like whatever it was, it was portrayed as white. And then we see when he's doing the whole thing with Sabo, it's black. And mind you, by the way, um, Diamante is noticing how there's been a change in Lucy's combat prowess, in, Luf in uh, his fighting style's change completely. So, obviously, he's starting to realize, wait, hold on, is this Luffy? Like, is, is this Straw Hat? Like, what's happening here? So, we don't know. We don't know. And Bartolomeo, he's all of a sudden riding, like, the whole Sabo hype train. He's like, yeah, Sabo, yeah! So, his senpai, because they, he should, since he respects Luffy, Luffy respects Sabo because he's older brother, technically, therefore, Bartolomeo respects Sabo. So, it's that kind of system. But overall, again, a great chapter, One Piece, and I will see you guys later. Be sure, of course, rate the video, comment, and subscribe as always. I, uh, I'm, I'm loving the hockey. I love this stuff. Uh, peace. Have a nice. Um, and we didn't make that much progress when it came to the whole Luffy invading the palace area, but I'm not too. But when it came to that part, I'm not too upset about it at all, because the focus on Sabo I think supersedes that of Luffy. Even though Luffy's gonna have a one on, well, let's assume he's gonna have a, a one on one battle against Flamingo. That's coming. But regardless, Sabo right now, he is the focus, in my personal opinion. Sabo and the sugar stuff. So, yeah, I'm done. Peace. Have a nice day. Before I go, one last thing. I have noticed that apparently, look at Trey Bowl's feet. Why are there chains? Like, is, so, what, what, what's he... No. I was going to say that maybe he was a former prisoner of Impel Down, and he was saved... When Luffy came in there, but I realized that's not possible because he was with Flamingo for uh like he was with Flamingo like a while back. Way before the incident had impelled down. But I'm starting to wonder like why does Triple have chains around his feet? Like what's going on there? Like uh, I I have no idea. I mean he he's already like he's not stuck to the ground, but since he's a sticky guy. He, he's, he's not too mobile, but whatever. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Again, Trey Bowl, to me, he's he's a mystery in of itself. This guy's just... Meh. Meh. Yeah, this guy... Yeah. Whatever. Give me thoughts on that. I'll see you later. Have a nice one.